and five, four, three, two, one. Hi folks and welcome. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Wow, what a fabulous day it's been so far. And we are so, so excited to be here presenting for the first time at Summit. Uh, my name is Chris Budin. My pronouns are proudly he, him, his, and I'm a senior food technologist at Mondelez International and have been with the company for almost six years now. Mondelez is the parent company of fabulous brands, including Oreo, Chips Ahoy, Ritz, Belvita, Sour Patch Kids, Swedish Fish, and all delicious snacks. I can go on and on, but um, I, I digress. Uh, within my role, working in research and product development, I can confirm that we indeed love our brands and our products are truly made with pride. For the last two years, I have also been leading our LGBTQ plus employee resource group, the Rainbow Council. This is my fourth time attending Summit and every year I look forward to the amazing energy. I've been an attendee here at Out and Equal since 2017, the year I decided it was my time to come out and live my authentic truth. Summit changed my life. Every year I feel more and more confident, more empowered, more, more empowered to speak up and speak out. I've learned how to be a better ally to myself, my colleagues, and my community. I've learned that intersectional allyship is the most powerful action we can take to be that change we wish to see. So thank you at an equal. You allowed me to find my voice in this amazing and validating safe space. So speaking of pride, I'm here today to tell a wonderful story of brand pride, the execution of an inclusive multi-year campaign and the formation of a beautiful and continuing partnership with the nation's largest family and ally organization, PFLAG. And it all began with an idea from the world's most beloved cookie, Oreo. Once upon a, upon a time, way, way back in the old normal, we're talking like back in 2019, Oreo was hard at work, brainstorming a fabulous, fabulously inclusive idea. Um, to give this story context, first, let's watch this short video together. Hey. Hey. You okay? I'm good. Hi, Mom. Hi, baby. Mom, this is Amy. Oh, hi. It's so hi, nice to meet you. Hey, Dad. Hey, I'm Amy. Hi. Nice to meet you. Are you hungry? Yes. Come on. Oh, yes, please. Homemade oh, jam. Oh, my yes. really challenging to be Oh, my friend. Hey, Dad. Hey. Night. Night. Good night. John. Is that your dad? What is he doing? Did I do it right? <laughs> I love you. Did I 
So for the second consecu consecutive year, Oreo and PFLAG have partnered up to be visible, speak up in support of, and stand behind our LGBTQ plus youth and their families, biological or chosen, elevating queer voices while creating playful moments of acceptance through education. As an ERG lead, I've been fortunate to be a part of uh, executing initiatives and facilitating difficult conversations with colleagues from all walks of life, races, religions, and geographic locations. I've witnessed the passion and the commitment of our leaders here, not just in the DEI space, but across business units. For example, our Rainbow Council executive sponsor, who is also the executive vice president of our global supply chain, has taken her ally role so seriously that she keeps her ally pledge up as her main contact picture in both email and teams, which is great and maybe even expected during Pride Month but she's kept it up there now for two years. And for us, that's a bold and supportive statement from a highly visible leader. We've partnered up with LGBTQ plus leaders, allies and change makers, both here at Mondelez and externally moving forward this very specific agenda, the need for diversity and authenticity in our, both our communities, families and workplaces. Today, Oreo helped us to find that voice. I have the honor to work with fabulous folks like Olympia, who, who you'll be hearing from shortly, who will talk more about the history and origins of the campaign and how it grew to be a model for family acceptance and inclusion. I've also had the honor to work with Jean Marie and Liz, who are joining us today from PFLAG to share their perspective on the evolution of their partnership with Oreo and the educational and social impact of a multi-year corporate partnership. As an out, open, and proud member of the transgender community, I've had pushback both during and after my transition with my family, which I expected, and know the feeling of being rejected by those you love. With campaigns like this on brands we know and love, it gives me hope that we are working to change those dynamics by emphasizing the importance of love and family acceptance. I already see the change from the younger queer generations. I know it's making an impact because so many of our younger LGBTQ plus uh, family and youth exude a confidence that I look up to and I admire. This is what that campaign means to me. We are changing the narrative around LGBTQ plus acceptance, ensuring these conversations are happening in workplaces, communities, and homes. It's not hard to watch that film and cry. Even though I've seen it a dozen times, that commercial pulls at every single one of my heartstrings. It's even more powerful hearing from colleagues within the company sharing how this video helped them to come out to their mother or this video encouraged their nephew to come out to their parents. It's these real world impacts that make the difference. So I'd like to hand it over to our speakers to introduce themselves to you all. Um, Olympia Portal, our senior brand manager of Oreo Equity at Mondelez, Jean Marie Nevet, director of learning and inclusion at PFLAG National, and Liz Owen, Director of Communications at PFLAG National. So Olympia, I guess we'll start with you for you to introduce yourself. Thank you, Chris. Um, I'm super proud and pleased to be here today um, representing Brand Oreo and, and Mondelez International. Um, and you know, echo a lot of the sentiments that Chris um, just expressed. This has been a really um, important partnership for, for Oreo as a brand, for Mondelez as a company, um, and for uh, me as an individual. Um, I'm super, super proud to be able to work for a company that um, believes in purpose-driven marketing. Um, which brings me to um, my first topic of conversation is really to kind of ground everyone on how Oreo has approached social purpose. Everyone knows Oreo, it's a beloved brand across generations, um, but just because you're a beloved brand does not necessarily mean you are a relevant brand. And I am proud to say that a lot of our work is really around building and maintaining that relevancy past childhood. And our purpose-driven marketing plays a very specific role in Oreo's whole communication ecosystem around building that brand love, driving deeper and more meaningful um, consumer experiences. So thinking about our social purpose, 
the way we have approached is we start with what the brand is all about, playfulness and connections. These are the two facets of the brand that we and I work on from an equity and a communications standpoint. The playfulness, this shouldn't come as a surprise to everyone. It's born out of the ritual of the cookie. It's the cookie that begs to be played with, the twist like dunk, everyone has their ritual. We express playfulness in almost everything that we do from our limited edition flavors to our partnerships. Um, but then there's also the connections piece. Now, now Oreo is a, is a wee brand. When you ask anyone about what their first memories of eating an Oreo is, they usually will say something about sharing that cookie with a parent or a family member. And it's really that bond between parents and kids that make Oreo really a unique part of people's lives. So our brand purpose is to fill the world with more playful moments that bring us closer together. But even though we're, we're more networked than ever before, we've never been more you know, networked, but we're also less connected. There's fewer and fewer sort of meaningful connections. Our relationships are challenged. We live in a difficult world. And as a brand that's been bringing families together for over a hundred years, when we think about purpose-driven initiatives, we wanna focus on those places where those connections and those bonds are particularly at risk. So when we started our journey towards unlocking our social purpose several years ago, we went through lots of workshops and frankly, we decided to focus on the areas that the team had a lot of passion for. It starts with yourself, your team, your agencies. If you want that kind of great and authentic work, it's gonna start from your people. Great, thank you, Olympia. And I think we'll move on to Jean Marie and Liz, and maybe you can briefly introduce yourselves and then give an overview of the mission of PFLAG and how this has evolved over the years. Sure, I'd be happy to start. Uh, my name is Liz Owen. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm the director of communications for PFLAG National. Uh, PFLAG has been around, uh, we're, next year will be our 49th year since our founding in 1973. But PFLAG all started with one 52-year-old mother uh, in 1972. Uh, who had a gay son. Uh, her name is Jean Manford, her son, uh, a, a prominent activist in his own right named Morty Manford. Um, he was harassed, he was beaten, and she, she knew he was gay. She was proud of him. And it was a time when it was, you know, there, were, there was also harm and potential harm for her in speaking out in support of her son. Uh, after he was harassed, she, she lived in uh, Queens, New York, she wrote a letter to the editor to several New York papers, uh, most of which, including the New York Times, refused to run the letter, which in, its, in the body of the letter stated, I have a homosexual son and I love him. Uh, the New York Post did run the letter and it got a lot of attention. So the Christopher, uh, the Christopher Street Liber Liberation Day March, an early precursor to Pride was happening and Morty encouraged his mother, Jean, to march with him. She was a teacher, a public school teacher, and her principal had threatened her several times saying, if you talk about your gay son, you will be fired. As a sort of flip off to the principal, she actually learned this story from her granddaughter. She actually stole art supplies from the school and made a homemade sign that said, parents of gays unite in support of our children. And she marched with her son in this pride march. And um, she told a story that at the time, all these people were cheering and, you know, as they were walking by and uh, the, the famous uh, child, uh, I think he was a psychologist, uh, Benjamin Spock was marching behind her. And she assumed everyone was cheering for him, but they got to the end of the march route and she was swarmed by queer people saying, asking her to please speak to her, their parents. And nine months later, PFLAG was born. So from that small meeting of 20 parents, of par you know, parents, family members, and LGBTQ plus people, grew to dozens of small meetings across the country. Um, those groups met in Los Angeles a number of years later and in the um, uh, early 90s pushed up to create a national organization, which then grew to more than 400 chapters, which is where we are now. Um, doing this work, meeting parents and family members where they are to help them love, support, affirm uh, their queer kids. And the, the three pillars of our work are support, education, and advocacy. Um, from that parent and family support mission, there was a natural evolution to the next piece of our work. And I'll turn it over to my colleague, Jean Marie Nevada, to talk about that evolution. 
Thank you, Liz. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Jean Marie Navetta. The pronouns are she and her or Ahia. Um, I am the Director of Learning and Inclusion at PFLAG National. And um, the role that I had in this is that um, Liz talked about our evolution. And we certainly have seen changes over the years in PFLAG, the issues that we're looking at, and especially the people who are coming to PFLAG. And around 2005 or so, our membership and our board noticed something really interesting happening, which was people showing up at PFLAG meetings who were not parents in need of a box of Kleenex and someone to listen to them because they were upset that their kid was queer, but it was people who were walking in and saying things like a lot of the people we meet at the Unequal Summit, you know, my best friend is gay, my favorite coworker is trans, you know, my neighbor's bi, and I see that their lives look different than mine, and I want to figure out how I fit into them, and, you know, we use the word allies, um, but in the PFLAG context, it meant going beyond families who were our primary membership and our primary drivers to looking at those people who have the connection, a friend connection, a work connection, a community connection to somebody in the community and who wanted to be of use. And when we did research on what was out there for allies, what we found were a lot of materials that frankly were not getting um, a lot of people engaged. They were very um, demanding, they were very list-based, they were not willing to listen to why people were struggling and then help them through that so the way they can become better allies. So we decided to take a swing at it and in 2007 launched our Straight for Equality program, which aims to invite everyone into this conversation, whether you are on board with us or not, we want to talk to you. And we make it very clear that, that we're serious about that. We want to educate allies with resources that were created directly for allies. And we want to make sure we engaged. Um, I came out of um, diversity training in the 90s, where um, the stereotype, I think, was very much you'd walk in, you'd hear about how awful the world is but nobody told you what to do about it. It was just, let's talk about how bad it is. And we really wanted to create something where when people said, what am I supposed to do? We could give them a lot of things to do. We wanted to activate them. And it certainly had an enormous connection in our workplaces, which is where this took the greatest hold. Um, and over the past 15 or so years of this work, um, we've trained over, I, I think we're now over 40,000 people have participated in learning sessions that we do, a lot of those workplace-based, and we've distributed over half a million copies of our ally-based publications. So it very much is sort of the next generation of PFLAG, and it was um, sort of a great place to start this conversation um, with Mondelez. Great. Thanks so much, Jean Marie and Liz. I think I um, directly benefited from your educational workshops um, through this partnership. I know that that through Mondelez, we were we were fortunate to host that too, and we have one coming up in, in November. One of them was on how to be an ally, and the feedback we got from that session was just so fabulous. And to be able to have the Straight for Equality guide and say, you know, like we have our ally toolkit, like here's more reinforcement. It just really really emphasize and like really just within this last year I've been seeing a lot of people um, step up as as active allies instead of just just watching you. uh, you're welcome um, so I think then next we'll move back on to Olympia um, so Olympia how how did the idea for a partnership with PFLAG come about um, and what were the insights behind Oreo's commitment to the LGBTQ plus community Sure. Um, so I would say that Oreo has been kind of on our allyship journey for, for a long time now. Um, in 2012, I think it was, we, we sort of took our first step and we posted this iconic uh, rainbow Oreo on social. It was on the one year anniversary of the legalization of same sex marriage in New York. Um, that post went viral. Um, and then bring, brings us all the way to 2019. We wanted to go further. That was more of a show of support. We wanted to you know, bring our support to sort of the real world, act in a bolder way. And World Pride was coming to New York City in June. So we ended up partnering with the National Center for Transgender Equality for this kind of grassroots activation. And with the help of the Mondelez Rainbow Council, we gave away nearly 40,000 free super special edition Oreo Pride pronoun packs. It was all about celebrating everyone's unique identities and participating in, in Pride. Um, and then that brings me to 2020, which was sort of the start of our, our partnership with PFLAG. And our, we had big ambitions in 2020. We wanted to really go from showing that support to trying to make a real difference and finding kind of our own ally in, in the space was important. And that's where PFLAG came in. The partnership was such a natural fit for, for our brand purpose and for our commitment. Um, and, you know, we partnered with them. We, we dug into the insights um, and PFLAG really reiterated 
that the act of the parent coming out to show support is one of the biggest change agents for LGBTQ acceptance. Um, and basically born out of that very simple insight, we created the Proud Parent Campaign, which you saw the, the video when we, when we first started, um, but it's really a, a long-term initiative um, designed to shine a spotlight on that powerful impact that love and acceptance can have on LGBTQ plus um, youth and really helping people with things like having difficult conversations, learning proper pronouns, bringing a partner home for the first time, what to say when someone comes out. Um, and so I'm, I'm very proud to have you know, been a part of the, the beginning of, of this partnership and, and the future for what's to come. Yeah, great, thanks, Olympia. So I think I wanna bring this back to the PFLAG team. So for Jean Marie, how did, how did PFLAG, PFLAG approach the relationship with Oreo? Um, well, I can definitely speak to it on the education side, because that really is sort of where I exist. And Chris, you talking about those sessions, thank you so much for mentioning them, because I think it sort of cues it up. Uh, you know, at PFLAG, we spend a lot of time looking at um, who we are partnering with, what messages that sends, and most importantly, how can we not just partner with organizations um, for a contribution or for brand recognition, but how can we make it a meaningful conversation? Because we are certainly very aware about the concept of rainbow washing, and, and it really is damaging. And we wanted to make sure that this partnership um, looked, edu looked at education on two really important levels. So as we started to enter into the partnership, we had two really big conversations. Um, the first one was, we would love to do this, but we want to make sure that there is um, meaning and purpose behind this and resources built into them, into this. So, um, you know, when we worked with the Oreo team, we would say, well, we want to do more education. And, and the question always was, well, where do we want to put it? And how can we add to this? And how can we build onto this? So we started doing internal education. So working with Mondelez employees, with um, some of our workplace learning sessions, we have another one coming up, like Chris said, I'm super excited about it and saw really, really great participation from people. People were getting really excited. And they were also seeing as this work was happening, you know, here's why I am so invested into it, in it. And here's how I can take it a step further after we watch the commercial and finish drying our eyes and reapplying makeup as I always need to, even after seeing it dozens of times. I was crying in the beginning. But the second piece of it was looking at the campaign itself and saying, it wasn't just enough to have the cookie. And don't get me wrong, the cookies were beyond exciting. And if you ever wanna be popular, you should just tell people you have a small stash and suddenly everyone's your friend. Um, we, learned, we learned that a lot. Um, but we wanted to build educational resources as part of the campaign. So if you go into any of the Proud Parent materials, there were all resources for if you are coming out or if somebody comes out to you and here's some resources and here's how to connect with support in your communities. So this constantly was looking internal and external at every possible turn. And even as we start moving forward, looking forward, every single conversation that we have talks about, oh, well, if we do this, what's the educational component that goes with it? And I have to tell you, as somebody who is hyper conscious of never wanting to be accused of rainbow washing or even contributing to that, it feels so good to work with an organization that constantly says, okay, and, 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 and that has just been a remarkable experience for us. Yeah, thanks, Jean Marie. Um, I, I totally also agree with the concept of rainbow washing, and I feel like I get to experience it from both sides, you know, working for a big corporation like this and having the opportunity to participate in, in these sort of campaigns. And then also, you know, as a pride attender and, you know, as someone who likes to celebrate individuality and diversity and know that it's just, it, you know, it's more than just happening in June, you know, like we need to focus these things and make them year round commitments. Um, so when I, you know, first heard one of, of these campaigns and I honestly I, I was actually at World Pride in 2019 as Olympia said you know handing out these pronoun packs and like seeing how just like people were were just like wow like I feel now that I'm included in you know like this kind of movement and then there was kind of also that same like but this is just for you know this is just for your marketing campaign to sell more Oreos and I I you know haven't haven't got gotten that feeling or felt that idea um, I know even initially when when Olympia and and her team approached approached us with this campaign, they came directly to the Rainbow Council and and asked for our advice. They showed us, you know, what what the plan was, and they said, "Bring this to your people, you know, share it around, and give us the feedback that you're hearing." And I thought that was just so unique, and like I was just honored to even be be a part of it that early, and also um, reinforcing like the authenticity behind like what what was happening. And now two years out, I, I still definitely feel it. 
Um, so um, yeah, thank you. So I guess moving back to Olympia, um, do you want to talk a little bit about more about the pride, proud parent idea and the execution of the campaign? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this, the centerpiece of the campaign was, was the film that we watched called Proud Parent, and it's really about addressing that journey that many parents face when their child comes out. Um, and we decided to release the film on social in time for National Coming Out Day. It was important to us um, that we show up outside of June. Um, and, you know, the, the, it was a very robust campaign across multiple touch points. We had the film, um, we had educational guides co-created with PFLAG, you know, helping parents and, and, and allies everywhere learn how to be better allies for the community. We also released these really fun, beautiful, limited edition rainbow cookies, but they weren't for sale. We, we decided to give them away as rewards to people for their acts of allyship. Um, and this brings me kind of more to the sort of the marketing side of things. You know, we were, we were designing what um, ended up being sort of this multi-tactic communication strategy with three key, very simple objectives. And the first one was around triggering the heart. Uh, we wanted to create awareness, get people to emotionally connect to the topic. This was all about um, really upping the ante this year and then trying to have more of an impact. The second um, objective was around informing the head. This is where the, the education, the resources, how to be an ally. That was a really, really key part of our, of our whole process. And then the third one was encouraging the action. We wanted to inspire families, allies, to show their pub public support, sort of model the change that you know, we hope to see in the world. Um, and then the last piece that is that is really special, I think, um, is you know making inclusivity in front of and behind the camera a north star of the campaign. I mean, this everyone who worked on this sweated this to to no end. Um, you know, we were building the whole program in really close collaboration with Pete Flag. The brief and the inspiration for the film that came from real experiences from people within the community and. Um, I'm really proud to say that we had meaningful representation within the team working on the project throughout every step of the film process, from production crew to talent to music composition to editing, um, you know, including the lead actors who are a couple in real life, which was really, really wonderful. Um, and then, of course, the Mondelez Rainbow Council has been an invaluable consult from the very beginning um, throughout all of our different pride activations um, and, you know, looking forward to the future. Great, thanks Olympia for sharing that. Um, so I think we're we're coming up towards the end of, of our discussion here. So I'd like to just kind of wrap it up with some lessons learned. Um, so Jean Marie, would you like to, from a PFLAG perspective, kind of kind of tell us how you feel lessons learned and potentially like what, what next steps would be? Um, I think my biggest lesson, and I think Liz should probably add hers because she comes from a totally different place than I do is always build the education into your campaigns. It was just so successful because at every turn we were making this purpose driven in the most meaningful possible way. And I'm so proud about that. But it was because I think the team at Mondelez was just so open to it. Um, it made it a great experience for us as your nonprofit partner. Um, but I know Liz, you probably have different bigger lessons that involve never putting me on Twitter. Well, that's certainly, that was a lesson I learned 11 years ago when I first started at PFLAG. You know, al alongside my biggest lesson for this is we're never wear mascara when Oreo is telling you they're going to preview the film in a meeting with them. That did not go well. Not a, not a dry eye in the room that day. Um, honestly, I think for me, the biggest lesson learned here is how much easier things go when the partner you're working with is collaborative and committed to inclusion from top to bottom. There was never a no. Everything was a, as Jean Marie said before, yes and. So, you know, even as we were working on the script, as we were talking about how we were going to share it, everything was a question to us. You are the experts. Tell us what is missing, even down to, you know, inclusive touches, like what type of diversity are we including within the film? You know, the visuals are so important and, and truly moving. But I, I think that is really the biggest one is, Working with tr partners who are truly committed to collaboration just makes everything that much easier. Yeah, great. Thanks. Thanks for your response. Um, I feel like very, very, very similar. I feel like honored to have been able to work both with PFLAG and with the Oreo marketing team. 
um, as as my my main job at at Mondelez, I'm 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 in the R and D department, so I usually don't get a lot of visibility to like stuff coming up like this. Um, but as an ERG lead, I've been so fortunate to work with just amazing people, um, both internally and externally. And I think the education piece, in my mind, um, because that's where my passion lies as an advocate. Um, really is just so important as paramount to, to supplementing, you know, um, all of these ideas and for us to be able to um, take it back with the Rainbow Council and bring it out to, to the rest of our colleagues. Um, I can tell you, honestly, we've had, you know, between like 200, 300 people in every, every webinar we've hosted with you guys. And I think that, that just having that component really, really makes that, that, difference. Um, I've seen just in the last six months, you know, this change in culture where, you know, people are, are starting to put their pronouns on their email signatures, like more and more, like it's sort of just like cascading downhill. It's like, all right, you know, like some people are doing it, the right people are doing it. So many people are talking about it, Oreo's doing it, you know, like this is, this is the movement. Like this is, this is where our workplace future is at. Um, it's, it's making a better space for, for us um, as LGBTQ plus folks within the workplace and allies. And it's also, you know, a really good model for, for our future queer LGBTQ plus folks who are entering into the workplace, who are looking for, for places like this and looking for, for these connections and networks um, that are just so super powerful. So yeah, so thank you for, for being here and, and just for hosting um, and, and working with us in this. Um, so Olympia, also I wanna just follow up with you about lessons learned and um, the potential um, consumer response as well for this campaign. Yeah, absolutely. Um... You know, this was this was one of the most successful campaigns that we've we've ever we've ever launched. It was certainly the most talked about Oreo campaign of, of the past three years, um, and it we kind of created this sort of cultural moment, um, and it, which was incredibly um, exciting, but also very emotional. The the outpouring of um, of support and engagement from from our fans and our consumers was really really tremendous. Um, and it wasn't just people telling us, "Oh, great, we you know we love the film. This is this is wonderful." Um, but people were sharing very um, very emotional and personal stories. And when you talk about driving those deeper consumer connections and, and, and making things that people really care about, this was this was a really good um, proof that we had done something done something right. That people were inspired to to share and engage on a really personal level. Um, of course, we get our our fair share of hate. Um, but it is a you know a drop in the bucket compared to the just the overwhelming positive response. Um, you know, Chris mentioned in the beginning there were lots and lots of stories of, of how um, the campaign kind of inspired people to be brave and and either you know connect with their family members if they were maybe not you know um, you know super connected with or even people who were inspired to come out to their families for the for the first time. So. What we learned is, you know, we can we can definitely participate in in this conversation um, and drive kind of consumer engagement on those sort of purpose based issues, but only if we do so authentically. Um, and that was that was a really it was the north star, but it was a it was something that we had to look at time and time again at every touch point, making sure that, um, you know, and and I can also speak for myself. You know, this was a this was a lesson in kind of leading with empathy and. Um, getting a really strong diversity of opinions. You know, there were so many things that we had to kind of sweat and make sure that, you know, we were representing this community in a positive way. We weren't going to do harm unintentionally. I mean, everyone came in with super positive intent, but um, there were a lot of conversations devoted to making sure that we were, you know, our intention matched the output. Um, and that was that was a really big learning for, for me. I think it was a really big learning for the, um, for the, the broader team who worked on this. Um, around making sure that you know you are getting diversity of opinions and, and it is not just one person leading the show. Um, and you know it's definitely something that we're going to continue to to bring forth in all of our work going forward. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Olympia, um, Jean Marie and Liz. I think at this point um, we can move on to the question and answer portion. Um, and I didn't mention this earlier, but we also have Jessica with us, who's going to be moderating the question and answer, and she's also been in the chat box, um, so you may have seen her there. Um, she's joining us um, for the back half, and she was the lead packaging engineer working on, on this Oreo campaign, and she's also uh, a Rainbow Council core team member. 
and that's our employee, LGBTQ plus resource group. Um, so Jess, if you wanna just take a minute to introduce yourselves and then we can um, just jump into the questions. Hi everyone, I'm Jessica Martin, my pronouns are she, her, um, and I am the Oreo packaging uh, R&D lead for North America. Um, and if people would like to put questions in the chat for the panelists, I can start asking those. I also have some prepared ones, but I would love to hear what everyone here is thinking and if they have any more questions. So while we're waiting, I'll just, oh. Will there be available regularly throughout the year? So Olympia, I think this one's for you. Are we, we talking about the rainbow cookies? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so um, so right now we actually do have, you know, the ability for people to kind of customize their, their mix of Oreos on, on Oreo.com with the different colors. Um, each year we're, we're trying to bring forth some kind of product execution. So in 2020, we had, you know, the full pack of rainbow, um, rainbow cookies this year in 2021 as part of our um, sort of Proud Parent 2.0, Proud Words campaign with Key Flag, we made um, flag boxes. Um, so we had five different flags with the cookies kind of matching um, our best as possible, matching um, the different colors of those flags. And those were made in, you know, in partnership and support of Key Flag. We gave those away, um, but we, you know, we'll see what comes, what comes next year. Okay. Um... Can you speak on any specific challenges that arose with the Proud Parent campaign and how you resolved it? This is kind of open to anyone um, that would like to speak to this. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can, I can, I can take that one. I, I, this might be a boring response, but I don't think that there were any sort of seismic challenges. Um, they were a lot of, um, you know, just the challenges of working on, on sort of purpose-driven marketing, you know, lots of conversations, people had different opinions on what we should include, what we should not include. Um, so I would say that they were sort of the everyday challenges of, of having difficult conversations. Um, we had a lot of discussion about sort of the, the, the final scene selection of what was going to make it into the final film. There were a lot of sort of these moments of tension um, that we had crafted really, really intentionally um, with with, with PFLAG and with, um, with the LGBTQ plus community. Um, and when it came time to editing, you know, some people wanted to cut certain scenes, some people wanted to keep them. It was sort of, which do we cut, which do we keep? And um, making sure that those scenes that were important to, to the community were well represented. Um, those were the kinds of challenges that, that came up. I mean, I think that everyone had a lot of support for the, for the project internally. Um, and we were all really kind of working in lockstep because we all had a lot of passion and, and belief in the project. Can I just build yeah. on that? Because we, um, yeah, I came in, I have a creative background. And I think, Olympia, when you talked about what stayed and what went and where did we make cuts, it was such a great um, proof for me of, you know, we talk about the importance of diverse creative teams um, and where people are really being heard. And, and it really, there were some nuances that are in that commercial that were so heard by Mondelez as we said, well, you know, the way they're looking, it might be perceived as this, but can we try this? And I think it really speaks as other companies look at how to develop campaigns, having that really diverse creative team, but also a diverse creative team in which everyone is being equally heard and taken seriously goes such a long way because there are a million stories of where that's gone off track. And here it just went so beautifully. And as we keep working together, it keeps happening. And that is just, it's a gift. I have a, I'll build on that. I have a, a, a good example that I, I think really played out well, which was, you know, the moment with the neighbor next door, as we were planning this campaign, it was the height of the Karen conversation and trying to be even super intentional about how to portray the neighbor, right? Where it didn't fall into cliches, where it wasn't, it was the, the kind of subtle looks that, and that it was the dad that they cut to, like even having the conversation around how do we portray this without any dialogue at all, right? I mean, that moment is all visual, but I remember us really talking through that moment for a while, even though it's so quick, but it is the moment of shift for the dad where he sees something 
he empathizes with his kid and sees something that they don't even see, the look from the neighbor and how to do that in a way that is not a cliche, but is really authentic to the experience that a lot of people have. And the way it was managed, I think really speaks um, volumes about creative uh, collaboration. And then the other thing I'll say is, you know, I live in the comms and the social space. And as you mentioned, Olympia, there are always gonna be people who have negative response, whatever. But I will say, if you can talk authentically and honestly about things, when you don't have to feel like, ooh, how do I message this? There was nothing that had to be made up or spun about this relationship. The relationship is authentic, as authentic as the care and commitment of Mondelez and Oreo. And that, that makes it so easy to manage communications because you just tell the truth and it just, it just makes the job easy. Yeah, and also from working on the project itself, we were in peak pandemic um, during the Proud Parent pack launch and having a lot of like resource constraints when it came to um, making the packs themselves. And we had the full team like outside of our core group helping us to make sure we delivered on this and really gave the best product we could out to the community. And that, that was so, so wonderful from being a part of the community myself and being on the project and seeing that support from all levels on the project. So another question that came in is how do you fold in parents of LGBTQ plus people that are interested in getting involved with your ERG or BRG? Um, are there support or internal initiatives for this experience? Is there part of an ally outreach? I think I may be able to answer that one. Um, as an ERG lead, um, we do have an active allyship campaign. We have uh, toolkits. We, as I mentioned just earlier, earlier in the presentation, um, Jean Marie has been fabulous with teaching us how to be an ally and providing that information with straight for equality. And um, it's just something that is is always on the radar for for the resource group. I mean, we don't we don't call ourselves exclusively LGBTQ plus only. It's always LGBTQ plus and allies. And a lot of those allies are parents of children who are in the LGBTQ plus community as well. So it's just as valid for them to be a member and to know, you know, like not only like what their what their child potentially could be facing in the workplace, but know how to currently make the workplace a better a better place to be for 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 us folks. Um, so I think that out, outreach is definitely essential. That's why I think that PFLAG is also a fabulous and amazing organization. And, um, you know, like I would always like point to you all for, for resources for folks who, who may need that for, for families. And the parents are super active and vocal when we do the classes. We see them, Chris, like they're in the chat. You can hear them speaking up, giving examples. They're so engaged. And I mean, if I go back on chat, sometimes looking, you know, about my kid, about my child, about what happened, they're very much there. And I think very much um, heard the ally message and stepped right up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the same thing I'm seeing. Yeah. Um, even I know just here at the summit there at the opening pl plenary yesterday, there was a, a speaker, a uh, really powerful speaker who had a trans, a trans kid that they were looking how to know how to support and found that support at work through other people who are going through the same thing. And those are the same kind of folks that we have in, in our Rainbow Council that are just like, I want to be a better ally, you know? And of course, like like everybody's welcome and we try and give th those resources as needed to, to anybody who reaches out. Another question from the chat to the PFLAG team. Uh, what kind of traffic increase did you see to PFLAG with the launch of this program and partnership? Um, well, huge. I mean, social media engagement was off the charts. Um, I mean, the, it was a little bananas, um, but we managed to keep up with it in the last few years. And then the one thing that we thought was especially great, so we created, I put it in the chat, um, pflag.org slash proud parent, which is a place people could go, they could see the film, but more importantly, they could access the educational guides uh, that Jean Marie led the, um, the creation of with uh, the team from uh, Oreo and Mondelez. And um, we, Jean Marie, you could maybe talk a little bit about that, but the engagement with those guides, uh, the traffic there was truly significant and it was tracked very specifically to moments in the film. 
Yeah, we actually had literally looked at it. At least, thank you for reminding me of that part because it all seems so big now when you look back. But literally looking at these moments in the film and saying, oh, here's where they felt difference. Here's where the father noticed that something was going on. Here's where the father wanted to step up. Um, and I think we just sort of built based on that um, and it made it very responsive. Um, but I have to say, it was, it was really easy to do this because I think on the Oreo side, what we were being given to work with, I mean, this product, this commercial, this whole campaign, it just, it, I'm saying this is somebody who writes educational materials, you couldn't have asked for something easier to work with. I mean, it was so intentional about, this wasn't just about selling a cookie, this wasn't just about building a brand, but it was also about providing a service. Um, you know, as, as Olympia said, we are in many ways more disconnected than ever. And this was about how do we close that gap? And it just made it very simple to do. Awesome. The next question is for Olympia and Chris. Um, with Mondelez being a large corporation, um, the question asker is curious if you could speak on your experience with your respective leadership on the level of support you felt throughout this campaign to produce something so meaningful to our community. I can, I can start, Chris. Um, yeah, it's a really, it's a really good question. I mean, we work for a massive multinational global corporation um, and that comes with all sorts of um, benefits and all sorts of, of challenges. Um, I think the, the, the simplest way I can put this is that Oreo is the crown jewel of Mondelez. You know, basically Mondelez goes the way Oreo goes. Um, it is the most important brand in the portfolio, um, you know, certainly from a revenue standpoint. So um, when Oreo does something, you know, it's, it's, it always has the full, um, the full support and commitment from, you know, from the executive team. Um, so it, basically to say that no one's going to let the crown jewel do anything that is going to rock the boat. And it was really amazing to see that, you know, we were, we were receiving support at all levels of the organization, all the way up until the very, very top. Um, I think everyone collectively has felt really, um, really impassioned by, by, by the work. Um, and, but part of it was also making sure that we were bringing our stakeholders along for the journey, you know, checking in with them at, at sort of key intervals and key stage gates, um, you know, getting that, 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 that buy-in. Um, but, you know, it, uh, we kind of unlocked something special in, in 2020. And um, I think that, you know, our, our initiatives are only gonna get bigger and better um, for, for the future. Yeah, and then just also a little bit of my perspective, um, and I probably don't have the same visibility to, to the campaign as, as Olympia had for, you know, obvious reasons, um, but when you all approached us and said, you know, this is what we're planning, like, here's the deck, tell us what you think, um, just from that perspective, um, having, having that visibility so early on for the input of what was going on, um, it really just inspired, like, the, the ERG, um, it inspired us to, to, you know, like be, be, I don't know, more available and passionate and know that, that y'all are taking things in the right direction. Cause I think that the rainbow Oreo concept has been floating around for a really long time. And as an ERG, like we have so many um, R and D folks within the ERG. We're just like, yeah, like we'll take it and we'll just do a limited edition on our own. And like, we were literally having those conversations which is like kind of funny. Um, and then like that same year, y'all, y'all, you know, developed this campaign. So I think it's just, it's, it's time, you know, it's relevant and, you know, like people are, people are really ready to, to, to see these things, to take it for what it is, but then also to see really the value underneath what's happening, which is like having these conversations and doing it with 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 this educational component and, and the authenticity it deserves. I think we have time for one more question. Um, this is also again for the Mondelez team. Um, does Mondelez look into internal ERG example, the rainbow counselor for uh, consumer facing ideas like the feedback flag campaign? Um, I guess I can I can take this one. Um, I think that you know our we're continuing to sort of build the relationship between the ERGs and the brands, um, and you know they are they're available to the employees, um, but they are also available to the brands um, as like brands kind of want to step in further into sort of purpose driven marketing and space. And so um, you know 
I, I'm giving Chris visibility and where we're, you know, we're soliciting that feedback at the right stages so that, um, you know, the feedback process is really, really important. So is the review process. Um, and it's, you know, it's kind of this balancing act of, you know, of, of, of moving the project forward, but also making sure that we're getting um, the right people weighing it in on it at the right, at the right stages. Yeah, I also second that. I think um, just I, I talked about this in, in my response to the last question, and I know that it, it is just genuinely appreciated um, to have that visibility so early on. Um, so we look forward to, you know, having having another year and more of these conversations and more beautiful partnerships. Um, so I think with that, we may be like pretty much coming up to out of time. Um, it doesn't sound like we're going to do any more questions at this point um, if you all are cool with that um, so if there's not any final comments from any of the speakers i'll give you guys a second if you want okay so then we'll just go ahead and close out the the workshop um, i really appreciated all of you so much coming thank you olympia liz jean marie um, Jessica, for for sharing this powerful story and and the journey on on the evolution and how we got to where we are today. Um, thank you so so much for Out and Equal for hosting us to give us this amazing platform to inspire others. Um, so with that, I guess we'll wrap it up. Um, have a great rest of the day, and hope your experience at Summit is just as powerful as mine. Um, thanks for joining everyone, and take care. Thank you all. Great session. Thank you. Thanks, Phoenix. Thank you. Thank so do we all need to do anything else um, at this point? No, you're good. I'm going to, I've stopped the recording. So 